Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. I'm not very formal. Here's today's zinger. I've got yarn and they're multiplying and I'm losing control. Let's get on with today's tutorial and let's begin right now. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're working on the Cable Twist Crochet Hat. Now I made a sample of this last night. I am actually really surprised on how much I enjoyed the, the stitching journey for this. This was a lot easier than I expected it to be and I really enjoyed the color transition of my particular hat. So this is recommending Red Heart Roll With It Sparkle. You can see it's got a bit of sparkle to it and you can see that you can have some really fun colors with this. So there's different kinds of shades and I also chose a shade that was in the darker family. So I have part of my sample here. So it does transition ever so beautifully. I was really quite shocked. I never even got to the white section of here. So I'm on the adult version. Look how much yarn I have left over so I can do a very generous pom pom. So let's talk about the sizing of this because that's what's gonna be important for you. So the sizing for this is six to ten years of age and also a woman's size generally but it does fit me as an adult. Um, so then you know woman, adult, men, you know all that jazz. So what we have is that it's a using a four millimeter size a G crochet hook and what this is is that it's much thinner yarn than normal. So when you're looking at it from this perspective you can see how thin this yarn is but that means that when you're wearing this which I've tried it on it's actually a lot more delicate. So even though it's on the on uh, medium weight four it's on the low side as far as like the thickness. The, what I did figure out though is that this cable work is in sets of 10. So you can see that there is chaining of 80 or 90. So 80 is this a child, 90 is the adult. You see that there's not that many um, extra stitches in order to change the size like that. So if you keep it in the sets of the 10, so maybe you can get it even to a smaller child by probably eliminating out an extra 10. But I'm not gonna give you that information because it's not here in the pattern. But that's what it's gonna be working out to be. So what you see on page number two is the diagram. So we have the brim area. We have the main section that is a repeat and then we have the finishing here and you can see the sizes of the hats here. Really quite fun and fabulous. I'm gonna leave the pom pom for you to decide if you're gonna do that. I'm going to take the easy way out and do a manufactured pom pom on the top of my hat. So my goal today is to show you how to make the brim. My goal today is to show you how to do the cabling itself. So I'm just gonna do a really small swatch sample, a really small hat and then I'm going to bring back my other sample that I've been working with and I'm gonna show you how to finish it. The nice thing about this particular hat, why, why I really like it, at the end of it we're just gonna gather it and it's gonna bunch up on its own. So there is no decreasing that's required at the top of the hat. So I almost consider it's an easy level just for that perspective alone. So let's grab our yarn and let's play and I am going to be substituting with Red Heart with Love today with a bigger hook just to demonstrate with that so I don't crack a new ball and then I'm gonna be bringing back my sample near the end of the project just to show you how to finish it. So without further ado, let's begin. This is an intermediate level but I think it's pretty close to the easy side of the intermediate. Let's start off with the slip knot and I need you to either chain 80 for the child size or 90 for the adult size. So here's my tip. So let's just chain 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Now it says not to twist the chain so what you can do just take this off and put your hook into the very last one and then pick it back up again and continue along. And what this is going to do when you're ready for this at the end, this will not be twisted. So 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20. So go all the way to either 80 or 90 and if you are substituting just keep it in sets of 10 and I'll be back in just a moment. Now as I promised you I'm just doing a small swatch so I only have 30 chains on here so far. So that's all, that's where I'm gonna stop. So once you get either to 80 or 90 you're just gonna yarn over and pull through and through. This should not be twisted if you're doing it the way that I just showed you. Okay let's begin and let's go to round number one. 
In this pattern when we go to start a round it says that chain two does not count as a stitch and you'll see that in the diagram as well. And so you're just gonna chain two that's not a stitch and the same one that you did the join with is where you're going to begin. I recommend that you get the back loop of the stitch. It will look nicer and you're just gonna yarn over and I need you to half double crochet into each of the back loops all the way around. And when you get all the way around we have to make sure that this is still not twisted and that's what we're going to do and it should be the exact same number that you changed. So if you chained 80 there should be 80 half double crochets and if you did 90 then there should be 90. So please half double crochet yourself all the way around. So finishing up the first round I wanna make sure it's the same number. So in my case it was 30. So you either may have 80 or 90 depending on the size you're making or if you customize it's still the same number that you started with when you did the first chain and just slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet. Ignore the chain two. It's just gonna sit in there and fill in the space. Let's move on to the second round and the second round is gonna be repeating until the brim is two inches thick. Let's begin second round. To begin the second round it's always gonna be the same. You're going to chain two. It doesn't count as anything and just concentrate then on the first half double crochet that's right below it and you're gonna make that a front post half double crochet. So just coming around the post itself. So just stay in the front side and just half double crochet. So it's gonna be a tight looking brim. It doesn't make it tighter in the distance but it makes it tighter in the, in the height. The next one will be a back post using half double crochet. So wrap the hook coming from around the back and coming back to the front between the posts and then push it, that post to the back side. Once you get your hands in this motion it becomes a much easier and half double crochet. So the next one has to be a front post double crochet. So just come in the side. Okay and then the next one is a back post half double crochet. So by doing this, this is creating a ribbed look which gives it elasticity on the brim. So I want you to keep alternating between front post and back post when you're going all the way around and I'll meet you at the end of the round for round number two in just a moment. So coming all the way back around the last stitch should be back post half double crochet and then you're just going to join it to the first front post half double crochet. Ignore the chain two. Okay so pull that nicely together and you can see it will look like this. So in the real sample that's what it looks like here. So what I want you to do is that I want you to repeat the second row until it's two inches thick and that's for all the, si the different sizes. So all the two sizes. So it's gonna be two inches in the height and let's just recap and let's show you this once again. So let's repeat second row now until it measures two inches. So just start your new round and I want you just to concentrate on the front post half double crochet that's right below it and make that as a front post half double crochet and if it's in the back post keep it as a back post. So you're making the ribbing happening itself. So then this is a front post and then a back post. So once you get a little bit more into your hands it's a lot easier to do the stitch because there's more to grab onto. So now I want you to continue to keep doing this round until you get to your two inches or when you think it's, it's, it's thick enough for you and then I'm gonna progress in the next part of this video to start doing the body of the hat. So I'm not gonna do two inches. Um, I don't need to because I can demonstrate what we need to do from the hair. So let's uh, meet there. So just put me on pause now and get your two inches done and we'll resume in just a few seconds. So let's move along to the next part of this tutorial. So hopefully you have your two inches done of your brim. So we're now we're going to move on to round number one all the way and keep repeating a certain amount. So we're gonna start with round number one where we're gonna do a half double crochet into each one of the stitches. So we're gonna be eliminating the front post back post from this point. So once we get uh, beyond row number one we're gonna have to concentrate and establish our ribbing. So the ribbing that you'll see when you look at the sample here I know the color's hard to tell here on the camera but what you're gonna have is that you're gonna have some two stitches that follow up like this and then you're going to have the cabling in between those. So once we get that established on row number two it becomes really quite simple from that point. So let's begin and start row number one of the body of the hat. So let's start row number one of the body of the hat 
just chain two it will not count as anything. It's still a builder. It will always be a builder in this particular example. So starting in the first half double crochet, the front post half double crochet, you want to make that as just a regular half double crochet. So each stitch around is one half double crochet and this will eliminate the ribbing effect at this point which will establish the beautiful brim area. So half double crochet yourself all the way around for round number one. So I'm coming up around number one, coming all the way to the end and coming into this one. This is the last back post half double crochet that was before. And then you're just gonna attach it to the first half double crochet. Just ignore that chain two. And that will conclude that. So now we're going to begin round number two through five which is the repeat pattern for this section. When you're looking at the repeat what's gonna happen is that we're gonna chain two and then we're gonna put a front post have our double crochet in. So now we're moving to double crochets and trebles. So we're gonna come straight on down and we're gonna do a front post double crochet. The next one will be a half double crochet. This creates an indentation inward so that it sinks in. The next six will each be front post double. The next one is a half double crochet in a regular stitch which causes it to sink down and then the next two are front post double and then the next half is sinking back down. So what I want you to pay attention to is to see how these two are grouped together is in pairs. It's actually the same thing but it's done right here on the seam line. So you're just gonna continue to repeat, repeat, repeat and you're going to be um, in this particular section every time you go around. So let's begin the round number two. Take your time and make sure that you get it. It's in sets of ten and that's what makes the multiples of ten is right here on row, uh, round number two. Let's begin. Let's begin round number two. You're going to chain two will not count as anything. And in the half double crochet right below, you are going to put this as a front post double crochet. So just using the front post only make that a double crochet. The next one is right here. Okay, just kind of pull it and it's right there and that's gonna be a half double crochet into the regular stitch. This is gonna cause it to sink backward and behind. Starting in the next post right here, the next six will each be one uh, front post double crochet each. So just count six. So now there's currently two, three, four, five, and six. So the cable, the main section that you see that catches your attention is right in this six. So the next one is going to be a half double crochet in the regular stitch. So it's just right there. Do you see it? Make that a half double crochet in the regular stitch. That will sink it backward. The next two will each be a front post double crochet. And you're gonna continue this around. So technically when you're looking at this section here, these two it, it would be right here. So this is the separation between the two. So let's just do another repeat. So the next one is one half double crochet by itself. That'll sink it backward. The next six are front post double crochets. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So the cable is going to sit in, in this grouping of six in the future. The next one is one half double crochet by itself and then the next two are again front post double crochets. And I want you to continue this sequence all the way around and if you are right your very last stitch before you do the join will be a front post double crochet and I'll see you there in just a moment. So continue the sequence. I'll be back in a moment. So I'm coming up close to the end so that I've just got my grouping of six that were just put in. So the next one has to be a half on its own. And the last stitch here is a front post double crochet. The chain two creates a small separation between this, these, these two but it's just, it, it just works. So just leave it be. So once that last front post uh, double crochet is in, just join it to the first front post double 
like this. And so I want you to take a gander around it. it Maybe hard to tell here on camera but there's gonna be six and then an indentation and then two. These are the front post doubles. An indentation six, an indentation two, an indentation six and etc. So just check that. Make sure that everything is set because the next uh, round number three is going to rely on that to be established. So round number three and round number five are gonna be the ones that are going to have you just second guess yourself but once you get used to the motion it gets a lot easier. You're going to chain two and then your front post double crochet. So these ones that were the twos by themselves are always gonna be the same as a front post double crochet so it keeps a line going. We're going to half double crochet then the next one and that will always keep that indentation going and you'll see that happening. So the only thing that's really changing here is going to be within the grouping of six. To do this when you start off you're gonna half double crochet the first one and then you're going to do a front post treble around the third one. Remember that it's in groups of six. So you're gonna come to the third one and do a front post treble. These back here that are grayed out those are front post double crochet but you gotta make sure that you work behind this so it stays in behind but it's still a front post double crochet. Once those two are in you are gonna immediately skip the next one and you'll just do the next two front post double crochets so those are easy and then the very last one in the sequence will then be a front post treble around this one to create that line. Once that last one's done you'll half double crochet in the half and then the two front posts again and then you'll half double crochet in the next and then keep that sequence going all over again. Let's try row number three. It's not as hard as it looks honestly. So let's begin and we're going to chain two. Does not count as anything. It's a builder. So look for the front post double crochet that's directly below and keep it as a front post double crochet. And then the next one is a half. You can see that it's sunk behind a bit. So just make that a half. And you're just gonna focus primarily on the six. So let's show you how this is done. So just think about three and three. So you have a total six so three and three. I want you to wrap the hook twice and come to the third one over and do a front post treble. Okay so that's leaning over. The other two are here. So what you need to do is that they're a front post double so you're just gonna wrap the hook and work behind this one here. So just move it forward and capture the first one is the furthest one from the from this here. So it's the first one and just pick it up and just shift this one that's over just down out of the way and make that a front post double and then keep that still shifted down out of your way. Wrap the hook and do the next one. Okay. And then once that is done you can shift it back up and you can see that the two are now in behind. So to finish off the other three that are part of the six you're going to immediately jump over this one here and double front post double crochet the next two after that. So the second half of the, of the six is a lot easier to do. And once those two are in you are going to front post treble to the one that you skipped. and that just created the line. See that? So the next one is up so it's gonna be a half double crochet so keep it as a half. The next two are the two front posts and you're gonna keep those as front post double crochet all through it the whole thing. And then the half is up and then we have another grouping of three or another grouping of six. So let's think about this again. We're gonna start with that treble first so wrap that hook and go to the third one over and do the front post treble. And then we need to front post double these two. So you start with this one and then this one. So wrapping the hook, shift this out of the way. So just going in between. And just capture the first one as a front post double and then the second one. And once that's done this one can shift back up. 
Now you have the other th grouping of three. So you start by skipping the first one and immediately front post double the next two. And then front post treble the one you skipped. And I want you to do that all the way around. It's really honestly once you get used to the motion it becomes a lot easier for you to be able to do. So then the next one's a half. So keep it as a half. And then the next two are front post double crochets and etc. So please keep the sequence going all the way around. And you will see the lines are going to happen right before your eyes. Please do that and I'll be back in a moment. So I'm coming up to the end of the round. I've just done this last section here and don't forget you still have your half after the last six that are complete and you still have the front post double crochet to worry about on its own and then you're just going to join it to the first front post. So now we're gonna move on to round number four which is a nice easy round from this point. So in round number four we're going to establish and it's gonna be the exact same thing we did in number two. So this gives the opportunity for these cables to rest and to form their shape nice uh, and, and basically form their shape into a nice solid shape. And so we're just going to maintain what we see. So we're gonna chain up two front post double and in the halves as, as always. And then here in the six we're just gonna make each one of those stitches a front post double crochet to stabilize that cable. Let's begin number four. Let's begin number four. You're going to chain two and you're gonna keep the sequence going. So it's gonna be a front post double around the front post double below. The next one is a half. Now the six that you have you're going to work in sequence. So you just work from the furthest over and keep moving along and make each one of these as a front post double crochet including the ones that are in behind this line. So if you cannot see it just shift it out of the way so you can pick them out of the background and you're just gonna continue to mosey on along. So these two here that's part of this three just start in keeping the sequence and pick the first two out of the background. And then that last one of the grouping of six is this treble here. So keep that as a front post double as well. And see it looks more stable. <laughs> it's more stable than I am for sure. So what we have now is that you have your half double crochet that's next. So keep it as a half. And then your two front post doubles. Keep those as your front post doubles again. And then your half to make it sink. And then you're back to your six. So staying in sequence make those as front post double each. And once you get used to the motion it becomes a lot easier. So I need you to continue this around for number four. So every time there's a number four you're gonna do this and continue the journey. I'll see you at the end of this round in just a moment. So I'm just continuing around in number four just maintaining the stitch work. And after a bit just turn on the TV and just enjoy the journey. It's actually surprising how easy this is. And so then you're just gonna maintain then as you did all the way around. Now we're moving to number five next and number five is gonna be the last part of the repeat and let's go back to the diagram. As we begin number five again the, the middle sections in between the cabling area is gonna be the same. So chain up two, front post double and then half and then you'll do that here as well. So this time what we have to do is that after the half is in we have to skip the first one. So just look at it like it's this one. So you skip the first one and front post double the next two. Then you're just gonna reach over and finish that with the front post treble so that it traps the other two in behind. Once that one's in you're going to reach on over and do the very last one a front post treble and then you'll fill in the ones in behind. So it's just basically the opposite to what we did. So instead of doing it in this sequence we're doing it in the opposite sequence there. And so that's all there is to it really. So let's begin number five. Let's begin round number five. Chain up two doesn't count as anything. Front post double the same double that's down below. Half into the next half and now you got your, your six here. So you have to skip the first one out first and just front post double the next two after that. I find number five is the fun round. I don't know why I just found it fun. <laughs> okay so I'm gonna come back now and I'm gonna capture that one. So I'm just going to do and capture it. 
so the front post treble. And so that will lay down in front. Now we're gonna immediately come into the very last one of the grouping of three. So it's the third one over. So one and two are skipped and go to the third and do a front post treble around that one. And then these two that are sitting there empty, you're just gonna shift that forward and capture those and make them a front post double. So you're keeping that diamond shape in the front. Like that. Okay, so the next one's a half in the half and then the next two is a front post double each. The next one's a half and let's just do the sequence one more time. So to start a new section you're gonna skip the first one and just front post double the next two. Then you're gonna come back with a front post treble around the one you skipped. And then skip the next two and go to the third one and do a front post treble around that one. And then come in and do a front post double around the two that you skipped over. Just stay in behind. So just shift that treble out of the way so that you can gain access to it and you can push it back up later. And then half and a half, the two front post doubles and etc. Please do this all the way around for round number five. So at the end of the round number five you're just going to continue after you've done that last cable section. So half and a half a front post double on its own and then attach it to the first front post double. And so let's go to back to the diagram. Let's talk about your sequence because now you've done it and you can repeat it over and over and over until you're satisfied and let's talk about that next. So now that we've done the sequence we've done two through five. So now you can reverse back the video and do two through five and you can count on the sample what it is here but what your goal is is that you want the um, project to either be nine inches long or nine inches tall sorry or seven inches tall depending on the size that you're working on. What you have to be paying attention to in order to start the final of this is that the final round after you are satisfied or close to it as far as the height is concerned has to either be um, a row number um, two or four. So it has to just be these regular front post double crochets not the one that's coming over. So it's either going to be two or four is going to be your last and so this here when you're looking at it from a perspective of a diagram this is either two or four. Then the very final round will be this. So what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna have you then pick up and do your sequence until you get to the size that's pretty close um, to seven or nine inches and then I'm going to bring you back on the other sample that I've been working through and do the final two rows with you and finish that sample today. So now I'm back on my particular project. I have the height that I want nine inches. I have to finish off on a second or a fourth round. So when I'm coming back in, so let me just bring you in here and I have that I finished on a fifth round so far. So I have to make sure that it's one of those ones that are just front post doubles into everything, nothing that's turning on its side like these trebles. So when I start the next round which is gonna be the second final uh, last round sorry is that I chain two and just front post double crochet in the front and I half in the half and then these ones here I just make them each all the six a front post double crochet like you had been before. So this is where I need to get ready so that I can do my final round next. So just a front post double into each one of these which helps stabilize the, the look. And then half and the half and then the two front post doubles as always and etc. So please complete this round and I'll be back for your very final round in a moment. So I'm coming up to the end of the second last round of this hat and just keeping the sequence of what we already know it to be. Lots of yarn left on the hook to or on the ball to make a pom pom later if you want to. So the very final round, let's do that. The very final round, just chain up two 
and you are going to just apply one half double crochet into each one of the stitches all the way around. So no longer worrying about those front posts at all. So please do that and this will conclude this off and when we leave this at the end we want a very long tail because we are gonna gather this entire opening at the top and pull it shut and that's what our goal is next. So I'll see you at the end of this round in a moment. So at the end of the round you are just going to continue to half double crochet, go right to the end and then this is it. So join it to the very beginning. So you have to create a long tail so that you can use this to do a running stitch they call it. I've never heard of that before until now. So just keep a long tail and you wanna gather the top edge with a tapestry needle. So just pull this through. So placing the tail end onto a tapestry needle I want you just to pick this up and I just want you to run this stitch through. You can probably go every skip two and then do the third and etc. And all you're just doing is that you're just gathering these stitches. And at the very end I want you to pull it tight. So don't pull it tight yet. Wait and then just continue to weave in and out and I'll be back in a moment. So now I've woven this all the way around and I wanna patiently Patiently, so I'm gonna start pulling and it's gonna start gathering those up. And you wanna be firm about it but you don't wanna be crazy about pulling too tight either. You wanna make sure that this is closed completely at the top of the hat. So with your tapestry needle still intact, hopefully, I'm just gonna put my hand in behind so I can kinda gain access to how big this hole is and keep on pulling until it gets closer. Then what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna take where this is coming out, I wanna go completely the opposite side and go straight across. Again, pull tight. Then I want to go over here and crisscross the other direction over. And if you wanna do that a couple times you can. Okay and then continue and etc. Once you're happy with that, I don't wanna do too many times, I don't need to. It'll stay together and there will be a pom pom sitting on the top. If you don't want a pom pom, just make sure you have this extra secured. Then I'm going to, and you can see it's nice and close to the top, put the needle down through the middle of the hat, watch your hands on the inside and pull up on the air. So I'm just gonna turn it inside out. Pull it all the way through. On the inside, just have it connect with some yarn and have this so that it ties itself into a knot. And do that twice. And to have absolutely no yarn tails at all for this, all you just need to do, and you'll do this with the beginning strand as well, just do the same thing. So just drag the yarn underneath some stitch work. Don't go to the good side. Just stay in the same fibers that are on the back. So don't go too deep. And I want you to weave back and forth a total of three times. I have one, and go about an inch to two inches, and then the finally the third time is a charm. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to also secure the one that is on the brim. Any loose ends that you may have had just in case you decided to change color midway through the process, which you could have done. Just make sure that you take the any strands and also hide those in. We are looking at the inside still, the inside of the hat. So favor the stitch work on the inside of the hat. So don't go to the good side of the project. And again, weave in your stitch work three times back and forth. So I'm going to apply a pom pom. You can make one. We have videos for that if you wish. There's still a lot of yarn on the the ball even for the adult size. So when I look at it. So my strategy if I was to use the same yarn which I could is see how the color sequence is pretty awesome. 
what I would think about doing is that I have a little bit left of this darker color. I would pull that out and start with the lighter color and make my pom pom with that. So therefore it's like a nice clean break. So I do have a manufactured one. So I'm going to use a different yarn in order to secure that. So I just pulled some Karen one pound out. And what I'm going to do is just put that into a tapestry needle as well. But the needle has to be um, more pointier to get it through the fabric of the ball. With the manufactured pom pom you cannot see it but you can kind of feel where the joins are in behind. So right here where the thumb is. So with the needle I want to capture the material itself. Okay so capturing the material itself and I wanna pull so the material is about or sorry so that but the tail is about halfway through. I am then going to take my crochet hook and come up through the bottom and just come to one side of the center piece and grab that yarn and pull through. I'm gonna come to the opposite side of the hole and grab the other strand and pull through. Now if people do craft shows not everybody likes pom poms I don't know why but anyway I'm not even gonna go there today but anyway I want to secure this with a, a tie. So if I ever have to wash this hat all I just need to do is untie this. Some people use button work in the back. So let's just pull this right snug to the hat and let's turn this back inside out. So on the inside of this hat tie this into a bow tie. Therefore if somebody is complaining to you at the craft show that they don't wanna pom pom you could just tell them to undo the tie and remove it and then you can also tell them they can undo this. So once you have a nice generous bow tie you can just snip the extra yarn that you don't need and that stays on the inside of the hat like so and therefore your hat would then be a finished pom pom hat just like so. Really neat and I think it's a great little project and I've enjoyed the stitch journey and this is the cable twist crochet hat with our friends at yarnspirations.com. Bye bye.